This is a short video presentation for uh, creating joints between two parts, prismatic joints actually. It's a very simple problem, uh, but uh, I'll look at two cases. One is a, a rectangular bar with bar with a rectangular cross section, which is supposed to have a prismatic joint with that hole inside of this uh, 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 this rectangular cavity. And then, then I'm going to repeat that with uh, a cylindrical bar, which is supposed to slide inside of that cylindrical cavity. So let's start with uh, actually this situation. Uh, I have not put any assembly constraints here because I want to create a joint myself. So let me go ahead and uh, 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 go to digital mockup, give you kinematics. Okay. Uh, first, uh, let me anchor. Uh, yeah, the only thing that has been done anchoring this space, that's okay. So I'm going to create my mechanism. Uh, I'm going to create a new mechanism, mechanism number, I suppose, two. So I'm going to anchor that. This is anchored. Obviously, there are no joints here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to create the joint. So prismatic joint between uh, this edge and that edge. Okay. And let's see now, a plane, uh, which one did I pick? This plane, and say that plane. And say OK. Now, if this doesn't look the way we want it to be, so I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to flip these arrows so that it has a, uh, better look. Right. OK, good. Now, no big deal. This is a prismatic joint. It's created, so we can make this thing a length-driven joint. Let's, uh, sorry, length-driven joint here uh, between, say, uh, I don't know, zero and maybe uh, four inches, four, something like that. Zero, zero and four inches. Okay, mechanism can be simulated. It's not a big deal, so you can see that it moves the way it's supposed to. Okay, very good. So uh, now, I'm going to repeat this problem a different way. So first of all, let me undo all of these so that we go back to where we started. There we are. OK. As a matter of fact, I'm going to delete this, uh, this mechanism completely. Where is the joint? Uh, let me see for a second. Uh, where is the joint? It is, uh, where is the mechanism? It is right here. I'm going to delete it. So everything is going to be done, gone. Good. There. OK, so we're back to square one. Uh, let me now create a mechanism trying to do it a different way. For example, uh, I'm going to say I'm going to anchor this. So create a fixed part. It's a new mechanism. This is the one that's going to be anchored. No joints, as you can see. This time for the prismatic joint, I'm going to try to select that edge and this edge, which is just what we did before, except that instead of these planes, I will select, try to select, uh, for example, the, this plane, and instead of that, one of these planes here. Well, obviously, it's not going to work, because when I do that, it says this is an over-constraint. Uh, in fact, it won't do it, as you can see. Cancel. All right. So the planes must be meaningful. This plane and that plane, as I did before, and that edge and this edge. OK? All right. So let me now go to the cylindrical one, OK, which is down here. And when you look at it on purpose, when you look at uh, these two sketches, uh, for example, this sketch, is, uh, is, is drawn symmetrically around uh, the, the local axis. But when I look at the other sketch, this other sketch, on purpose, I did not create that circle with its center being exactly at, at the origin. That, that was on purpose. You see why. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, try to create the, uh, the mechanism, the, the, the prismatic joint. Okay. Uh, first of all, we're going to anchor this uh, piece, new mechanism, anchor that piece. Okay, good. Now, 
prismatic joint here between this axis and that axis okay now what about the planes there are no planes here and if we tried for example to create to uh, select this vertical plane here if I try to do this I won't be able to pick the other plane obviously this is not going to work okay now one way to fix this is to uh, uh, if you think about it, one way to fix it, if you go to the sketch and make this center coincident with that center, with that origin. Exit. Now you can see if you go back to the mechanism, right here is our mechanism, back here. And now do the uh, a prismatic joint, this axis and that axis. And for example, this vertical plane, doesn't matter which one, uh, say this vertical plane and that vertical plane. And OK. Now degree of freedom is 1, and you can make this thing a length driven joint. OK. Uh, again, this is. Uh, this makes sense. You can see that? Oops. All right. Okay. Reset. Good. Now, the other option would have been the following. Okay. So, let me undo. Undo these things. There we are. Okay. And undo. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is to make sure that a vertical plane of this pin, or this rod, stays at the same angle as a vertical plane of this uh, uh, bar. So to do that, obviously, uh, you have to go uh, to uh, you have to go to the assembly design. Go there. Create a constraint here. Create a constraint. So uh, let me see now. The constraint is uh, these these constraints. Uh, this fixed. You know, okay, look, I can leave it. Doesn't matter. So we're going to find an angle constraint. See, this is an angle con between the vertical plane of this rod and the vertical plane of that block whatever it is if it's zero in this case it is zero so just leave it like that okay now when I go to digital mockup let me delete this mechanism delete the children okay so uh, if I go to digital mockup well, why don't we actually also create the axis coincidence between the axis uh, uh, the axis and the axis of that and of course uh, update no problem now we go to uh, DMU kinematic get the magic wand out where is it right there no mechanism and uh, uh, get the magic wand out or create and notice that the prismatic joint has been created okay now let me undo this go back there go back there okay, let's delete this oh, all right so if I, if I try to create that uh, prismatic joint here, that would be problematic because I can select two axes, but I cannot, cannot select the planes, okay? So uh, let me, uh, well, I can select these planes, but these are all forbidden because of the constraints that I put between these axes. So let me cancel that. What we can do is we can, we can go, if we, if, we, if we go back to part four, the sketching part four, and move this thing 
to that center, to that origin, exit, and back to the DMU. Now we can create the prismatic joint directly and manually. Prismatic joint between this axis and that axis, and it doesn't matter between one of these planes and that plane. Okay. Now you can see that there is a prismatic joint created. So uh, you have to do a little bit of thinking uh, when it comes to creating a, a prismatic joint between two cylindrical surfaces. Uh, just cannot randomly select axis is okay. Selecting the axis is okay. Two axes is okay. But the planes, either they must have the parts must have been drawn in a particular configuration in order to be able to be planes, or uh, uh, you have to use the angle constraint instead of the coincidence. Okay, coincidence constraints. All right, I'll take care of it.